You've seen how SwiftUI lets us use the at state property wrapper so you can make changes in our state of our view and how we can use a dollar sign to bind those values to SwiftUI controls and then how changes to those values cause SwiftUI to reinvoke the body property of our views to reflect the new data. Now all that combined let us write code such as this at state private var blur amount is 0.0, .0. And our body will say as a V stack with a text of hello world, with a blur radius of that blur amount. And below that will be a slider with a value of dollar blur amount in the range of zero through 20. And after that, a button saying random blur, blur without an I, uh, which will do blur amount it equal to double dot random in the range zero through 20. Now when I run that code, uh, we'll of course find that dragging a slider around will dynamically adjust the blur level of our text, but also pressing the button will choose a random blur level in the range of zero through 20. So we'll get both a immediate tap plus uh, a button press. And either way, when it changes, it'll update the UI straight away. So nice and sharp here. Let's drag to the right, increasingly blurry, right to the end, basically invisible. Then back to the start again in real time, which is great. And then random blur just jumps around to random locations uh, like that. Exactly as expect. Now let's say we want our binding to do more than just handle the radius of our blur uh, effect here. Perhaps we want to run a method or just print out a value for debugging purposes so you can see what's happening. And you might try and do that with uh, a property observer. You might say here, did set print new value is string interpolation blur amount like that. And now I'll run the code again, because I think you'll be disappointed and or confused. Uh, when I drag this around, nothing will be printed our next code. There's nothing down here at all. And if I press random blur, then things will appear. So I did print out a random value. And then down here again, that prints out all random nicely. Um, if I drag it, nothing is printed here. So sometimes it's printing, other times it isn't printing here. And to understand what's happening, I want you to think back to our experiments with core data. We use the at fetch request property wrapper to query our data, but I also showed you how to create your own fetch request struct directly and then put it into underscore fetch request to rewrite the uh, underlying value there. Now, property wrappers have this name because they wrap our properties inside another struct that handles the extra functionality. What this means is when we use at state here to do blur amount, we actually have a property here that is a state struct with a string or a double or an int or whatever inside it. This one here is a state double or a state string or a state, you name it. Uh, similarly, when we use the at environment, property wrapper, there's an environment struct with values inside it. And that's how it works. Now, previously, I said that we can't modify properties in our views because they are structs. And therefore, they're fixed, which is why I have to have at state and so forth. However, you now know, state itself, this thing is also a struct. At state is backed by a state struct. At environment is backed by an environment struct. At fetch request is backed by a fetch request struct. At publish is a published struct and more. They're structs. So now we have a conundrum. How come that struct can be modified? Now Xcode's got a really helpful command called open quickly and you get to it by pressing uh, shift command O. And just type a value in here for something you want to search on. And here I'd like to type state like that, and hopefully the first one into Swift UI state, go ahead and select that and you'll jump to uh, the generated interface of Swift UI telling us what Swift UI uh, thinks state is. And that's what it is right now. You can see at frozen, at property wrapper, public struct state, generic of some kind of value, which is the data it has inside. And there's lots of extra things in here I'm gonna worry about, but in particular, I would just scroll down and look for the way uh, the setter happens down here for the wrapped value, the thing inside it. <clears throat> um, and so this here is uh, the 
inside value, what it actually contains, and the value here stands for int or string, or in case of our blur radius, a, a double, but it's some kind of value inside here. And you can see it has a getter, but it also has a special setter called a non-mutating set. And what it means is uh, when we set the value of this uh, state wrapper, it won't actually change the state of the struct itself. Behind the scenes, it gets sent off to SwiftUI. SwiftUI stores that separately in a place where it can be modified freely. So it's true, the struct itself never changes. It doesn't mutate. It's handled somewhere else by SwiftUI, which is why it can be destroy the whole view and recreate it, but that value will come back from SwiftUI later on. It's just stored elsewhere. So now you know that, have a look again at our blur amount code here with our little property observer. And on the surface, you might think this says, when the blur amount double changes, run this did set observer. But now you know at state actually wraps its contents in a new struct. So what it's really saying is when the state struct that contains blur amount changes, print out the new blur amount. Still with me? <laughs> Let's go a stage further. You've just seen how the at state thing here wraps its value using a non-mutating setter, which means really neither blur amount nor the state struct wrapping it are changing. Our binding is directly changing the internally stored value, which means the property observer is never being triggered. So changing it using a button here works because that's going through the non-mutating setter, the one that triggers 50 wide to save it away and then refresh the view correctly, right? That will trigger a setter, which will trigger did set. That's the non-mutating thing we just looked at a second ago. But when we use the slider here, we aren't adjusting blur amount, we're adjusting dollar blur amount. We're poking around, we're bypassing that setter directly and adjusting the value. So, how can we solve this? How can we ensure that some code is run when a binding is changed? Because this thing is not working. How can we do that? So we always get some code when the values change, whether it's dollar blur amount or just blur amount equals whatever. No matter what happens, how do we get some code to run? And it turns out there's a modifier just for that purpose. 